If you produce long documents that contain several sections, perhaps headings and subheadings, a table of contents can be a very useful feature. My advice would be to prepare your document beforehand, not taking into account layout at all. Just get your ideas or facts down on paper and you can make it look better at the end. Presentation is a really important feature for first impressions and it affects how easy it is to read your document. If you're presenting a report or an assignment, you want to be proud of it and you want to make it easy for the person who needs to read it. On this document here, I'm going to demonstrate some, some features that you might like to use. This is a document that's already been set up and I'm going to go through how we use our headings and subheadings. On this home menu, you have a series of buttons here which are different types of text. This will help you make sure that your document is presented and formatted consistently. So what you do is you highlight the text that you want to change. And you perhaps choose one of these features across the top. You'll see that my cursor here is round heading. This is this bit of my document has already been made into a heading. So you highlight the area that you want to be a heading and you click heading. If I scroll down a little bit, you highlight the area here that you want to be a subheading and you can choose heading two. You can put it in a different color. You can put it in a different font. What's important is that this particular feature is selected. You do that as you carry on down your document. So I highlight this. There's another subheading and I click heading two. And I click this one. And heading two. That means that all my subheadings. Now have the same format to them and my document knows which areas are headings and which areas are subheadings. Those headings, subheadings are really important for preparing a table of contents. So the next thing you need to do, having formatted your document appropriately, is to put your cursor where you want a table of contents to appear. So this is a two page document can see as I scroll through it. Just two pages there. What I want to do is I want a title page, then I want a table of contents page and then I want to go into my document. So I'm going to do that now. In order to insert a page, I use my control key and I hit enter and you can see I've now got a blank page. If this is my title page, I maybe want to copy this title to my title page. And I might want to center that text and I might want to move it further down the page. So I have a title page. Then I want my table of contents on a page on its own as well. So I hit I control and enter again. And I have this blank page now for my table of contents. So having put our headings and subheadings on our document, we now need to go to our references menu. And you can see these buttons have changed and the first button on my references menu is table of contents. I have my cursor where I want my table of contents to appear. I go to references. I go to table of contents. And you've got a drop down menu here now of different types of tables of contents. So you've got an automatic table one and two and a manual table. We're going to look at the automatic tables now. Automatic table one has the word contents in blue and you can see here it's using headings one, two and three. Table of contents two automatic one is very similar. It just says table of contents rather than just contents. So I'm going to choose that second table. 
And what you will see there is that what it's done is it's put in page numbers against my headings. So I have this was my heading and these were my subheadings. So as a reader, I can automatically go if I want to look at the risks. I know I need to go to page four in my document. Remember, I have my title page, my contents page, and then my document starts here. So for the risks, you can see they're here on page four. If you make any changes to your document, the page numbers may change. So it's important that you remember to update your table of contents if you've made any changes. And to do that, you click into the table of contents area and you can see here you've got a button that says update table. When you click that, it says update page numbers only or the entire table. You can choose either one of those and click OK. So if you had moved your document around, moved the headings, inserted extra pages, it would be very important that you went back in and updated your table of contents before finalising your document. Remember, save your document at the end because until you save it, this table of contents won't stay there.